There's a common way that I have noticed how people save. This method does more harm than good because it creates an illusion that you are building savings, but defeats the overarching principles of savings. And in this video, I'm going to explain why. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Reese, and in today's video, I'm going to be discussing an ineffective method of saving and what you can do to improve upon it. When I was growing up, there were always things that I wanted to purchase but could not afford to buy because I wasn't really earning income. And then that all changed at the ripe age of about 14 when I got my first job at a local supermarket, where I started earning anywhere between one and $300 a week depending on how much I worked. So now with this new income source, I started to write down all of the things that I wanted to buy. I basically created a list of my top priority purchases and at the very top was a new gaming PC. And from here, I started to save basically about 80% of my take home pay every single week because when you're 14, most people don't generally have a lot of expenses. So I was able to save quite quickly, but it still took time. And eventually I did end up saving enough to buy this new PC, which felt amazing. I had ticked off the thing at the top of my list. I bought it. I actually saved the money to buy it and the reward itself was the computer. However, I had now spent every single dollar that I had saved to make that purchase. And what I realized was I was saving for a particular item instead of saving for the sake of building savings. Which brings me into the main body of today's video. This method of saving is ineffective for three reasons. The first reason is kind of self-explanatory. I would need to start from scratch in order to buy the next thing on my list, which would take time to accumulate those savings again. This is problematic because during the time now that it takes me to save up for this item, I might miss out on the opportunity to buy it at a discounted rate. Time is the thing that constrains me here and I lose the flexibility to buy it at a more financially beneficial time. The second reason is that I'm essentially saving for a particular item, which I've kind of already mentioned, but it's problematic again because I'm kind of leaving myself without any additional savings. And at the age of 14, I highly doubt anyone's thinking really hard about how they're gonna buy a house or build an emergency fund. Things like that don't really cross your mind at the age of 14. Even myself, I was thinking about it somewhat, but definitely not on like a level that I think about it today. And I want to reiterate that at the time, this was absolutely okay. But now at the age of 26, when I'm recording this video, I still have friends in my age group who save like this and who haven't built their wealth in any shape or form, like at all. And it's clear that it is now starting to play on their minds. No judgment whatsoever to how they've lived their lives, but every day that they get older and things start to change and people start doing stuff with their lives that is a little bit out of reach for them based on their financial position, it's clear that it is starting to make them question their lifestyles. It's starting to make them think about how they are going to the word is catch up. It's not a race, it's not a competition, but if you were to compare apples to apples, it is the scenario that they need to look at their position and compare it to someone else's and say, how am I going to get to that point? And the third and final reason why this is an ineffective way to save is that it's a bad habit builder. It is a great thing that I was able to save that money and discipline myself to save that money over a period of time to buy that item, but it is still a very bad habit builder. It taught me that it was okay not to save for the sake of saving. It almost made me lazy because the way I treated money during that very short period of my life until I started to get my shit together, I realized that I would be saving for something in particular. And if I wasn't saving for something at the time, I just had extra spending money which is not a good way to approach a disciplined routine or building a habit of anything really, but saving in this particular instance. Building a disciplined savings habit is so important. Learning to put a certain percentage of your take home pay every time you are paid away for that intended purpose is crucial to building a healthy relationship with saving money. And the second aspect to this point is learning to disconnect from that money that you are building the habit of putting away into savings. I have been doing this for over 10 years now where I've been putting at least 50% of my take home pay away into dedicated savings. And as my wage has grown over the years, I have only increased this rate at which I'm saving to the point now that I can buy what I want, when I want and not feel guilty or worried about where that money is going to come from. And most importantly, I'm still able to enjoy my life and not feel trapped like I'm missing out on something or that I'm not going to have access to money 
in the event of an emergency, just as an example. I am living my best life and it's because of the systems I've put in place and the hard work that I have done to get to this point where I don't even worry about the money that I put away into savings. It's not something that I have to think about and worry about. It's just, I've kind of disconnected from it. I've built the habit and now I'm living a great life, living well within my means and achieving the goals that I want to achieve. And if you build these processes and systems, eventually you will be able to buy what you want without having to worry about where that money is going to come from or if it's going to detrimentally affect you because you'll have the fundamentals down and will then be able to focus your time and effort into building your wealth instead of learning how to save. As a one-liner, I personally have taught myself to live well within my means and it has changed my life for the better. If you are someone who saves with this mentality, saving for a specific purchase, buy it, have nothing left over, or you know someone who does this, I highly encourage you to take some action and actually reassess how to approach saving or this method that you're currently undertaking or discuss it with them because it's something that if you change it, I guarantee you'll see long lasting positive effects from doing so. Out of the story of my friends that I mentioned earlier who still save like this, a lot of them have changed their ways. It's been discussions that have come up between us. We've worked on things together to build their own systems and habits and the outcome. And this is just one example is all of them, every single one who have changed their ways have either in the last couple of years bought their own house or property or they are now in a position to do so. They have enough money that they could go and do that if that's something they wanted to do, which is a massive feat to achieve. We're talking a proper size deposit in Australia is anywhere up to $100,000. Somewhere between 50 and $100,000 is the general deposit size for an entry level home for someone around my age. And all of these people have managed to save that type of money not saying just because they have learned to save a different way, they've put lots of other processes in place, but this was definitely one of them. The way they treated their money, the way they treated savings changed. And ultimately they're being rewarded for their hard work. Financial literacy is a tool that when applied correctly can change your life for the better. The benefits and ongoing effects that I have experienced from doing this over the past 10 years has been things like reduced financial stress. I'm no longer worrying about where money's gonna come from if I have to pay bills and expenses that I didn't know were going to be popping up in my life. On top of that as well, I'm able to live my life the way I want to live it. I can buy the things I want to buy, I can do the things I want to do and not have to worry about the cost of doing them. Within reason, of course. And with that being said, if you're someone, like I said, who saves like this, think about taking action and giving it a go. Try changing your ways to just start building the habit of saving for the sake of it. You might be surprised with the outcome. Overall, I hope you enjoyed today's video. I hope it was insightful. And if it was, please don't forget to like and subscribe down below. It really helps the channel grow. And with that being said, I will leave you there. Have a good day, have a good week, and I will see you in the next one.